Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Tracy. Very loud in the front. One more time. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Day two. Everyone's up and awake. The East Coasters have been up for four hours, so they're ready for lunch. We're all good. Um, so welcome back to the Rare Patient Advocacy Summit. Uh, day two, I know that my brain is jam-packed, so I'm sure yours is as well. Um, we're looking forward to day two. Again, uh, breakfast was sponsored by Abiona this morning, so thank them if you see any of their representatives around. Um, so I'm excited to kick off uh, today's event with our Partners Every Life Foundation and a couple very uh, great parent advocates um, for a fun activity that really puts what this event's all about into motion advocacy. Um, so please welcome Max Bronstein from Every Life Foundation. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, maybe while they're, they're putting the slides up, we can just take a minute to thank Global Genes. So they actually doubled the number of people from last year. So that's a really huge accomplishment for them. And they've been working so hard to put this together. So let's just take a moment to thank them. So my name is Max Bronstein. I'm from the Every Life Foundation for Rare Diseases. And today I'm joined by uh, Melissa Hogan. I am a parent advocate and run a foundation called Saving Case and Friends, which is a Hunter Syndrome Research Foundation. And? And my name is Tracy Van Houten. I'm a board member of the Batten Disease Support and Research Association and also co-founder of the Noah's Hope Batten Disease Research Fund. So thank you guys for joining me on stage. Today we're going to be talking about the power of rare disease advocacy and clearly because we've doubled the size of this conference, you know, that shows the power of our community. So. Um, what I'd like to start out with is do a little bit of uh, question and answer. And this is the time where you guys actually get to answer the question. So here's a question for you. How many rare diseases have been identified? You guys can just sh shout them out. OK, everyone is right. That doesn't happen very often. Uh, <laughs> nicely done. Um, next question. So of those 7,000 rare diseases, how many have an FDA-approved treatment? 5%. Again, everyone's paying attention. Well done. Here's, here's one more for you. So how many of you all agree with this statement? No disease is too rare to deserve treatment. OK. So if you're not raising your hand, you might be at the wrong conference. But I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you guys are all aligned with me in, in this belief. Really important. So basically, when, when we think about these, these issues, the fact that we have 7,000 diseases and only 5% of them actually have treatments, we have this huge innovation gap is what we've been calling it. And so one of the ways that we think we can actually have an impact and actually close this gap is by using a tool that, that I call public policy. So I think this is extremely important for, for our community here. So here's a, a really hard to read chart. You're, you're welcome for that. But it's OK if you can't read this. What's important is that this shows the impact of something called the Orphan Drug Act, which was a law passed in 1983 that has had a tremendous impact on, on the rare disease space and has really enabled the development of hundreds of rare disease therapies over the last 30 years. So one of the most important things that the Orphan Drug Act included were a variety of incentives. So um, if there's one big takeaway that you guys can get from this chart, it's in two words, and that's that incentives matter at the end of the day because it is really important for getting companies and researchers and communities engaged in, in the rare disease space, and it's been tremendously effective. So we, we already had the, the Orphan Drug Act. That was over 30 years ago, and that was an historical moment in time for our community, and now we have the chance to, to do that again with something called the 21st Century Cures Act. Just another question for you guys. How many of you have heard of this legislation before? Oh, awesome. Fantastic. OK, so that's really good news. Um, this is a piece of legislation that's been in the making for over two years. There have literally been hundreds of lawmakers, thousands of advocates, doctors, patients, researchers. Everyone has been engaged in this process. And it's resulted in hundreds of pages of legislation, which I'm going to attempt to summarize in three bullet points for you. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, one of the big provisions of this legislation is billions in new funding for the NIH. I can't tell you how critical the NIH has been for our community, and, and I think many of you already know that. So this is you know, what's at stake here in this legislation. In addition to that, hundreds of millions in new funding for, for the FDA that can really 
help accelerate and, and modernize drug review at the agency. And then on top of that, there are bills in there that contain, again, this is why where incentives come into play, incentives that can actually double the number of therapies available to rare disease patients. So these are the reasons why we're so excited about the 21st Century Cures Act. Um, and on the next slide here, Melissa is going to tell you about how you guys can, can get engaged in the fight to make this law a reality. So just like with the Orphan Drug Act, uh, where parents got very involved in making that happen, we need you to get involved to pass the 21st Century Cares Act. And that's in your communities, online. We need you to help us push it past the finish line uh, to get the president's signature. So one of the things that we've been doing, and you may have seen them around, you may see the frame out there, is to take pictures and put them on social media uh, with the hashtag cures now so this is a, this is again in that top of the cutest pictures of the conference um, this is my son case he's nine and he has hunter syndrome and so we just made a sheet that had our state on it and uh, framed a cute little picture that was impactful and um, put that on social media with uh, cures now sent it we tagged our um, senators and our representatives on facebook and twitter and um, snapchat and different places so it's very easy to do. And so uh, to follow along with Melissa, here is the uh, little pictogram that, uh, that I made. It uh, shows uh, some pictures of my family. Uh, here's my uh, son and daughter, Lane, uh, who are affected by bat disease uh, really be before they started getting really sick. And uh, uh, I really wanted to make this message impactful. So uh, unfortunately, uh, time did run out for my son, Noah, this past March. And we really wanted to message that to our members of Congress to make them know that the clock is ticking. It's ticking for all of our loved ones, for those we care about, those affected by rare disease. And time is critical. It really does matter. So uh, we're asking everyone right now to, to come with us today and to take action, whether it's the pictures in the hall that you may have done yesterday. If you took those, please repost them. Uh, but on your seats and, and around your chairs, you'll find uh, uh, papers like this. And we ask you just to, to make a sign. Um, either you, if, you're, if you're not as uh, artistically inclined as I am, uh, uh, I just wrote the name of our state. If you know how to draw the outline of your state, you can certainly do that. We ask you to do that. Uh, be sure to tag the, your uh, drawing with uh, the handle cures now. And or, I'm sorry, the hashtag cures now. Uh, the hashtag uh, 2016 GG Summit. And on the back of that paper, you'll find your members of Congress's uh, their Twitter handles. So please tag them on Twitter, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, any that I'm missing because I'm not quite as uh, hip. I think you got all the grams. Okay, so those are all the grams. If, uh, and and uh, so take those pictures and post them and really encourage your members of Congress to take action. Uh, time does matter and we want to get that message across to them here this morning. So please take a few minutes and do that. If you're not entirely savvy on social media, uh, kind of like myself, uh, Melissa will be giving a presentation on uh, how to savvily use social media today at 2 o'clock in track one, I believe. Is it track one? So it is in your programs. So. So yeah, and let's go ahead, Melissa. Even if you've already done yeah. it, please do a sheet because we're going to do a group shot of everybody's sheet. So even if you've already posted one, go ahead and write your sheet with your state um, and maybe uh, mention of yourself or your disease or your child um, so we can take a big group shot. Yeah, so just take five minutes now. Have your little arts and crafts time. If you guys need a, need a marker, um, there are people who can actually hand you markers. If you need help posting, we have some people walking around who can help you with that. So let us know if we can help. I think we're, hope everyone's finishing up. If you guys have finished your signs, just do us a favor, hold them up over your head for us. Beautiful. And since I don't have a fisheye lens, I'm gonna take a panoramic, so hold them up there till I make it all the way around, okay? Is everybody ready? Get him up. Get him up really high. You guys are allowed to talk. It's just a photo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to take a regular one too. Hold up one more time. <laughs> oh, nicely done. All right. Fabulous. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.